Good evening. This is All India Radio and I am Nishit Kumar with the news at 9. The headlines. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to attend National Panchayati Raj Day celebrations at Riva in Madhya Pradesh tomorrow. to also lay foundation stone and dedicate to nation projects worth 17000 crore rupees government says it is making all out efforts to ensure safety and security of indian nationals stranded in conflict hit sudan center conducts first ever census of water bodies across the country west bengal tops list among states with maximum number of water bodies railways to launch puri ganga sagar divya kashi yatra from pune on friday covering several important religious destinations and in archery world cup stage 1 india and campaign with two gold and a silver and bronze medals at turkey's antalya and now the news in detail prime minister narendra modi will visit to madhya pradesh tomorrow mr modi will attend a program marking national panchayati raj day in riva where he will lay the foundation stone and dedicate to the nation projects worth around 17000 crore rupees he will also address all the gram safas and panchayati raj institutions across the country during the event prime minister will inaugurate an integrated e gram swaraj and gem portal for public procurement at panchayat level the objective of e gram swaraj government e marketplace integration is to enable the panchayats to procure their goods and services through gem leveraging the e gram swaraj platform prime minister modi will hand over around 35 lakh swamitva property cards to beneficiaries he will participate in program marking the grah pravesh of more than 4 lakh beneficiaries under pradhan mantri awas yojana gramin in the evening the prime minister will reach kochi in kerala and address the uvam 2023 conclave organized by the bharatiya janata party at thevara he will also participate in a road show from the airport to the conclave venue mr modi will stay in kochi for the night President Draupadi Murmu will visit Karnal and Hisar in Haryana tomorrow. At Karnal the president will grace the 19th convocation of the Indian Council of Agricultural Research National Dairy Research Institute. While at Hisar she will grace the 25th convocation of Chaudhary Charan Singh Haryana Agricultural University. The Ministry of External Affairs today said that the government is making all out efforts to ensure the safety and security of Indian nationals stranded in conflict hit Sudan. In a statement the minister said it is closely monitoring the complex and evolving security situation in Sudan. The ministry is coordinating closely with various partners for the safe movement of those Indians who are stranded in Sudan and would like to be evacuated. Apart from the Sudanese authorities, the Ministry of External Affairs and the Indian Embassy in Sudan are also in regular touch with the United Nations, Saudi Arabia, UAE, Egypt and US among others. Several countries have evacuated diplomats and citizens from Sudan's capital as fierce fighting continues to rage in Khartoum. The External Affairs Ministry said that as part of its preparations and in order to move swiftly, the government of India is pursuing multiple options. Two Indian Air Force C 130J are currently positioned on standby in Jeddah and INS Sumeda has also reached Port Sudan. The ministry added that contingency plans are in place but any movement on the ground would depend on the security situation which continues to be volatile with reports of fierce fighting at various locations in Khartoum. It said Sudanese airspace currently remains closed for all foreign aircraft and overland movement also has risks and logistical challenges. The minister said that its embassy is in regular touch with the stranded Indians in Sudan and is advising them on the viability of safe movement and the need to avoid unnecessary risks. Union Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman has said that due to the right approach of the government the condition of the Indian economy is better than that of any other country. Ms Sitaraman was speaking at an event interaction with intellectual organized by Thinkers Forum in Bengaluru today. She said the global community has appreciated India on its successful steering through the COVID pandemic and situation created globally by Russia Ukraine conflict. The finance minister said that the methods adopted by western countries during pandemic caused stress economy. It may be a war happening in Europe but it had global repercussions. And with all this because of the sanctions and because of the various global developments 
and the covid western economies which took a certain formula for dealing with the stressed economy situation and that method has now proven hurtful of their economies for, as an after effect Ms. Sita Raman said the government is working with the RBI and the concerned ministry to clamp down on Ponzi apps. She said a strong sense of caution is required among people in order to protect their hard-earned money. Talking on regulation of digital or cryptocurrency, the minister said all countries are required to be on board to control it, or else efforts will not be effective. Campaigning is gaining pace in Karnataka for the assembly elections. The state goes to polls on the 10th of May. Our Bengaluru correspondent has the details. Several star campaigners are campaigning for Congress and BJP in the state. Union Home Minister Amit Shah is arriving tonight and will campaign in Chamrajnagar and Hassan districts tomorrow. BJP National President JP Nadda will be campaigning in Chikbalapur and Bangalore rural district tomorrow. Rahul Gandhi is in Karnataka and campaigned in Vijayapura today. Tomorrow, he will interact with the sugarcane farmers in Belagavi and hold Yuva Samvad. On April 30th, the Prime Minister is scheduled to address a public rally in Chennapatana. As HD Kumaraswamy is hospitalized, his father and former Prime Minister Minister Deve Gowda is hitting the campaign trail tomorrow in Tumkuru district. Sudhindra, AIR News, Bengaluru. Meanwhile, the fate of two veteran leaders of Karnataka is at stake in the Varuna Assembly seat in the rural area adjoining Mysore city. Among them is Sida Ramaya of Congress, a former chief minister and leader of the opposition in the Legislative Assembly. V. Sumanna of BJP, a senior minister in the state government, is on the other side. Siddharamaya is also a strong contender for the chief minister's post from the Congress. Here is a ground report. A six-time MLA and two-time deputy chief minister, 75-year-old Siddharamaya wields considerable influence in Mesuru region. Siddharamaya has been a two-time MLA from the Varuna Assembly seat created after delimitation in 2008. His son Yatindra won this seat in the last assembly election. The BJP remained at the second position and has got a significant number of votes in the last three elections on this seat. The BJP has fielded 72-year-old V. Somanna, a five-time MLA and Lingayat leader, to corner Siddharamaya. Apart from these, a total of 21 candidates have filed nominations including JDS, AAP and 11 independent candidates. Jitendra Divedi, AIR News, Mysuru. The BJP President JP Nadda has appointed Raji Bindal as the party state president of Himachal Pradesh, while Siddharthan will be the party general secretary organization in the state. Mr. Nadda has appointed Pawan Rana as the party general secretary organization of the Delhi BJP unit. This is All India Radio giving you the news. For quick news updates around the clock, follow us on our Twitter handle at AIR News Alerts. Welcome back. All India Radio is presenting vignettes of select quotes of the Prime Minister from Monkey Bath as the program completes its 100th episode later this month. Today, in the 81st episode of the special program, let's listen to the excerpts from the Monkey Bath in which the Prime Minister spoke about the inspiration we draw from rivers. People, voice, and direct dialogue. That's your and our Man Ki Baat. Yes, this is how our Prime Minister connects with millions of countrymen. With the program Man Ki Baat, aired on the last Sunday of every month on All India Radio. This series, which started on October 3rd, 2014, will complete its 100th episode in April 2023. In the 81st episode of this special program, Let's listen to those excerpts in which the Prime Minister spoke of the inspiration we draw from nature. India is home to mountains, deserts, beaches, valleys, plains and many other stunning landscapes that make it a land of unity in diversity. And nature is full of lessons we can draw from. Lessons which can inform and inspire our daily lives. In the Man Ki Baat program broadcast on 26 September 2021, the Prime Minister reflected on rivers, our flow of life. Nadiyan apna jal khud nahi piti hai, balki parokkar ke liye deti hai. Hamare liye nadiyan ek bhautik vastu nahi hai. Hamare liye nadi 
एक जीवंत इकाई है और तभी तो तभी तो हम नदियों को मां कहते हैं हमारे कितने ही पर्व हो त्योहार हो उत्सव हो उमंग हो ये सभी हमारी इन माताओं की गोद में ही तो होते हैं Ministry of Jal Shakti has conducted the first ever census of water bodies across the nation. The census provides a comprehensive inventory of India's water resources including natural and man-made water bodies like ponds and lakes. In the census over 24,24,000 water bodies have been enumerated in the country out of which more than 23 lakh water bodies are in the rural areas and nearly 69,000 are in the urban areas. The top 5 states in terms of number of water bodies are West Bengal, Uttar Pradesh, Andhra Pradesh, Odisha and Assam which constitute around 63% of the total water bodies in the country. Railways will launch the Puri Ganga Sagar Divya Kashi Yatra by Bharat Gaurav Tourist Train from Pune on Friday under Dekho Apna Desh and Ek Bharat Ek Shrest Bharat scheme. The tender tour will cover the important religious destinations of Puri, Kolkata, Gaya, Varanasi and Prayagraj. The visitors will have the opportunity to visit various important religious destinations like Jagannath Temple, Konar Temple, Lingaraj Temple, Kalibadi, Vishnupad Temple and Kashi Vishwanath Temple. Railways Ministry has been operating Bharat Gaurav tourist trains from different parts of the country to showcase India as a destination in the international as well as domestic arena. Pro Khalistan preacher and Waris Punjab de chief Amrit Pal Singh who was on the run for a month was arrested from road village in the Moka district this morning in a joint operation by the Punjab police and intelligence wing giving more details inspector general of police Sukhshan Singh said Amrit Pal has been booked under the national security act under relentless pressure by Punjab police from last 35 days and all the wings of Punjab police they have worked in coordination for this special operation. I would just like to explain that NSA warrants were issued against Amrit Pal Singh and NSA warrants have been executed today morning. He was arrested at around 6.45. He has been taken to Dibrugad under NSA and further the law will take its own course. People in Punjab they have maintained peace and harmony and Punjab police and especially Punjab government is thankful to to the people of Punjab for maintaining communal peace, communal harmony during this period. In archery, India finished the campaign at the World Cup Stage 1 at Turkey's Antalya today with two goals and a silver and bronze medals. The Indian men's recurve team comprising Tarundeep Rai, Athanu Das and Dheeraj Boma Devara finished with a silver medal after losing to China by the narrowest of margins of 4-5 in a shoot-off in the finals. With this, India now have two goals, one silver from Stage 1 of the meet. Later in the men's individual recurve event, Dheeraj defeated Kazakhstan's Ilfat Abdulin 7-3 to grab a bronze medal. In IPL cricket, Royal Challengers Bangalore defeated Rajasthan Royals by 7 runs at Bengaluru. Put into bat, Royal Challengers Bangalore posted 189 runs for the loss of 9 wickets in the stipulated 20 overs. However, Rajasthan Royals failed to chase the 190 run target, scoring 182 for 6 in stipulated 20 overs. In the other fixture of the day between Kolkata Knight Riders and Chennai Super Kings is underway at Kolkata. In our bilingual live phone in program Public Speak tomorrow, we will bring you a discussion on prevention and control measures for malaria with Dr. Akshay Dhariwal, former director at the National Center for Disease Control and National Vector Bond Disease Control Program. Listeners can dial in the telephone numbers 011-2371-7106 and 011-233-1444 from 9.30 p.m. onwards tomorrow and seek answers from experts. You may also send your queries on WhatsApp number 928909404. The live phone in program can be heard on FM Gold Channel and additional frequencies. And now before we end the bulletin, the headlines once again. Prime Minister Narendra Modi to attend National Panchayati Raj Day celebrations at Riva in Madhya Pradesh tomorrow to also lay foundation stone and dedicate to nation projects worth 17,000 crore rupees. Government says it is making all-out efforts to ensure safety and security of Indian nationals stranded in conflict at Sudan. Centre conducts the first ever census of water bodies across the country. West Bengal tops list among states with maximum number of water bodies. Railways to launch Puri Ganga Sagar Divya Kashi Yatra from Pune on Friday, covering several important religious destinations. And in Archery World Cup Stage 1, India in campaign with two golds and a silver and bronze medals at Turkey's Antalya. And that is all in the news at 9. Good night.